What's going on with Qualcomm? Investors are buzzing about the company with good reason because the company has their fingertips in all the hottest areas of tech investing. And to top it off, they were just named JP Morgan's top stock pick for 2022. What did the analyst who made that call actually say about Qualcomm? Let me show you in this video. I'm Skylar James, welcome back to the channel. JP Morgan's analyst said the landscape still favors tech hardware producers just like it did in 2021. And for some tech companies like Qualcomm, a drop in sales to consumers will be replaced by an uptick in sales to businesses. I mentioned Qualcomm touches many areas of tech and this analyst listed four of them as standouts. Continued adoption of 5G devices, increased spending for hyperscale cloud applications, a robust ramp in telecom and 5G infrastructure spending, and a continuation of strong enterprise spending, a trend that the entire tech sector has benefited from. We all know that Qualcomm is a semiconductor company and semiconductors are stuck in a never-ending maze of supply chain issues and shortages. JP Morgan has taken that into account and says supply chain issues will delay the breakout of Qualcomm stock until the second half of 2022. Sweet, so we have time to get our money together. It also gives you time to hit the like button and become a subscriber. I release several videos a week that taste just like this one. Subscribers, get first dibs. Now remember, if you want to understand why semiconductors are facing a never-ending shortage, check out my video on it. It's you university level research available to you for free. Looking across the analyst landscape for Qualcomm stock, here's what we see. A mix of buy and hold ratings. Most recently, we see JP Morgan's 225 target. And remember, these targets are guesses or estimates of what the stock will trade for in 12 months time. Outside of JP Morgan's call, most of the targets are between 180 and 210, and the stock is trading in the low 180s as I record this. So what kind of upside is in store for Qualcomm? Well, that's for you to decide and and for you to bet accordingly if it suits your risk appetite. But think about all the areas of tech again, the ones that Qualcomm touches. Look at EVs. I put out a video recently about electrified roads that would eliminate the need for charging stations, roads that would charge the cars as they go. Qualcomm is a major player there. Take a look at this phenomenal promotional material from the company's website. Dynamic Electric Vehicle Charging, or DEVC, is a groundbreaking technology that has the potential to eliminate range anxiety, one of the current barriers to adoption for electric vehicles. The vehicle pads pick up the magnetic field and convert it to DC power for the vehicle. The initial testing of the system was with one vehicle, but when that worked so well, we weren't satisfied. So we've now had two vehicles charging simultaneously on the track. Well, the results of the testing have been really excellent. Now, you know I like to think grand. I have a big imagination. How much revenue would Qualcomm get if installed these across just 1% of the millions of miles of roads in the United States? Now go bigger. What about 1% of all the roads in the world? This kind of thing is a moonshot, a lottery ticket. Maybe. Maybe it'll pay off. Maybe not. It's a bonus to the company's core mission. Core missions like cell phones, Qualcomm chips, power phones from Samsung, OnePlus, Huawei, Motorola. The CEO told Yahoo Finance Live recently that Qualcomm sells technology to 25 of the 26 biggest car brands in the world. That technology ranges from various electronics all the way to BMW selecting Qualcomm as its autonomous driving platform. And speaking of the CEO, is this guy a rock star or what? Cristiano Amon? The guy I has been with Qualcomm for over 20 Five years. Started as an engineer, and boy, can he sell a vision. The guy has a head on his shoulders, and I get excited when I hear him talk. Amon also said that the metaverse could be as big as cell phones one day, and that we could all be walking around in a metaverse wearables powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon line of chips. Add all these opportunities and all this technology together, and what do we get? You get a total addressable market that the company says could grow by 7 X over the next 10 years. I want you to really take away that we're, we're having a 7X expansion and addressable market, and we never had so many end market opportunities for Qualcomm as we see today. 7X. I'm always careful of TAM estimates, but if anybody could pull off something like this, it's Qualcomm. These are only a few of the company's ambitions. I recommend you check out the company's Twitter page if you want to see their full offerings. They have posts 
touting their importance of 5G, Internet of Things, PCs, AR, and VR. So what's an investor to do with this information? A rock star CEO with a diverse portfolio crushing it on every level. Personally, I think the delay of the 5G taking over the world is a good thing for investors like us who might be a little late to the game. Remember that before COVID took over the financial headlines of 2020, we spent 2019 discussing the coming 5G revolution and self-driving, much the way we talk about metaverse in 2021. Lucky for us, we haven't missed the boat. There's still time. The biggest question is, what is the opportunity cost of choosing Qualcomm as an investment over, say, an AMD or a NVIDIA or a Marvell? While I think it's a great investment story and a great company with a bright future ahead of itself, I can't say for certain that Qualcomm would perform better or worse than any of the other semiconductor plays. Analysts aren't all that sure either. I guess we're all waiting for our crystal balls to come in, still on back order from that semi shortage. Which semiconductor play do you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. You know I read every single one of them. So if it were me, I would turn to ETFs. I want to own all these semiconductor names. Now, as proof that Qualcomm is a leader in self-driving, we see here that it is a top five holding in the iDrive ETF. ETF from iShares. And if we did the same screener for 5G, we see that Defiance gave it the second highest allocation in its 5G ETF. But look what else is in the top 10 there. Multiple semiconductor companies, which is what I've been saying for months now. Semiconductor ETFs offer you exposure to 5G, just like they offer exposure to metaverse players and self-driving and internet of things. We don't have to get overly specialized for coverage to these themes. We can just buy the semiconductor ETFs. Of my three favorite semi ETFs, SOXQ, SMH, and XSD, Qualcomm sees the most exposure in SOXQ and the least in XSD. These are all great ETFs worth owning for investors focused on the long game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Like and subscribe, maybe?